Hello, everyone, and welcome to MC305. This video will round out the rest of the Hilliard chapter uh, with internet considerations. Now, you may, may remember that over the past few weeks, we have been covering the purpose, format, and appeals of broadcast commercials. And what Hilliard introduces in this section of the chapter is that while internet commercials that are using video and audio elements are different because they're on the digital platform, they also utilize the same basic purpose, format, and appeals. So all the things that you have learned for broadcast and uh, commercials, whether that's TV or radio, you will utilize as you're doing social media commercials as well. But there are some key differences in the digital medium as opposed to the broadcast medium. One of those key differences is the way that people get messages. A lot of times we don't have to think about the programs that uh, our commercial might air on primarily because we're not entirely sure as the media creator how the media buyer is going to buy. So we have to be a little more cautious when we are making our commercial not to do anything offensive because we don't know if we're going to be showing during, you know, family jeopardy or whether we're going to be seen during, uh, you know, a TBS uh, family, uh, not family friendly show. And yet for internet commercials, we have a lot more control over where the person gets the message. It's usually placed on a particular uh, web page. If you're doing a video, you have to buy specifically for certain websites. A lot of times uh, you may be using uh, commercials on your own platforms. And so the, we have to be thinking about how are people getting our message? Another thing to think about is making sure that the ad is as interactive as possible, given the limitations of wherever you're placing it. For instance, um, if you are placing it on a website, then you want to make sure that you are adding some kind of hyperlink or interactivity that if you click on that ad, it's going to take you to the call to action that you're giving your audience. You want most of the time for your ads to drive action through a call to action, like click here to learn more or buy this now, you know, and, and that is meant to get the audience to take the additional action of clicking into the advertisement. Now, most ads do this, but not all advertisements on the internet, uh, are meant to drive action. Some are meant to just create awareness. For instance, Taco Bell created a commercial spot using Snapchat filters where it just turned people's faces into tacos, um, which, you know, I'm not going to go out and buy a taco because I have a Snapchat filter, but it raises awareness of the brand and it gets your brand shared by more people. Speaking of sharing, that's another element of internet commercials that are really important to consider. We all want as advertisers or marketers, marketers or PR reps for our content to go viral. But as your uh, textbook clearly points out, you can't create a viral ad. If you promise a company or, or even internally that you're going to create this viral piece of content, you're lying to them. There's no control over what goes viral and what does not. In order to make a viral video, you really have to have a video that is worth sharing. Think about the types of commercials or ads that you end up sharing. I actually shared one uh, recently this week, uh, Amazon's uh, ballerina commercial where, you know, she gets the part in the big play and she's so excited about it. Um, and then the pandemic hits and her performance is canceled. So her community, you know, comes together to allow her to do the performance on the rooftop, socially distance. And it's all about, you know, coming together as a community and not letting anything stop you. It's a wonderful message. It's a beautifully produced commercial. Um, but they didn't set out to make that commercial in order for it to go viral. It just has gone viral recently because of the message that it sends. So you really need to be more engaging when you're writing for the internet because you're competing with so many distractions like 
cat memes and other types of videos. And typically when we're using the internet, we're also multi-screening, like, you know, watching TV or trying to do your homework while also on YouTube, things like that. Um, and so you have to be able to compete against the various internet distractions. You also have to recognize that your video quality is likely going to be down as your consumers are watching it because they may be watching it on a smaller screen. You know, they may not have the internet broadband to be able to um, have this wonderful HD content. And so these are some things that you need to consider as well. But despite the issues that a consumer may have with a quality of video, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't produce content that isn't equally, if not more than engaging um, than the broadcast commercials that we've been talking about. It is important to note that most internet commercials have much smaller budgets than traditional media content commercials because uh, online advertising has yet to really prove itself to the majority of companies. While the trend is certainly catching on and online spending is increasing, television budgets are still far higher than online spending. This means that you have to utilize your budget in smart ways. And one of the smartest ways to utilize budget on internet commercials is not in production. It's not in making the actual commercial. Instead, it's targeting. It's placing money in um, ad targeting services like Facebook ads or Google ads to ensure that you're targeting to the right audience. This allows you to share more tailored messages to people that will really connect with it. Think about like when you're watching Hulu, for example, and it asks, asks you which of these two ads do you want to watch? You're giving Hulu information about what kinds of advertising resonates with you. And that's far more effective than just seeing everyday commercials that you may not connect to. Uh, you can produce more sensitive material or outlandish material on the internet rather than um, in traditional broadcasts because there's not the fear of censorship that there is uh, through traditional broadcast. However, um, you know, you're still going to be held to a certain standard. Um, so make sure that if you are using somewhat... Um, racy content or content that utilizes certain language that you're ultra targeting to an audience that won't get offended by it. It's also important to remember that you can't hide bad art. So even if you have a small budget, you need to really think about the concept uh, in its entirety. And remember, there are no true time limits on the internet. Uh, while for broadcast television, you buy a 30 second spot, that means your spot has to be exactly 30 seconds. Um, there is no kind of time limit like that for internet ads. The only uh, time limit truly is how long you can keep the audience's attention focused on what they're watching. So you may be asking yourself with smaller budgets, higher competition for attention from, from your audience and, um, you know, having production quality issues, how can we be successful? Well, it doesn't take a large budget to produce quality pieces. Bentley, which of course is a luxury brand owner, a few years ago when iPhone 5 had just come out, um, actually shot their commercial piece for their digital campaign on an iPhone and edited the entire commercial on an iPad Air inside a Bentley. So it shows that you don't have to uh, have these large budgets and large technologies in order to be successful. Uh, this is the only thing I can do. I draw to relax, I draw to find ideas. I've always been drawing, uh, so it's not work, it's just life. Cars are my toys. I'm playing with toys all, all my life. You have to know the brand first in order to design Bentley. Our design focus is always innovation but yet are respecting our tradition. This is always a starting point when we design Bentley. My name is Luke Donkerwalk and I'm uh, head of design for Bentley. My name is Sangya Lee. I'm a head of exterior design at Bentley Motors. So I'm gonna mute this, but allow it to keep playing. Notice the 
quality of images that are here. They're using narrative structure as a format for the commercial by um, kind of showing you behind the scenes of how Bentley is designed, uh, what makes it unique and special. Um, but the quality of footage that you can see just using an iPhone is quite impressive. And so this is the kind of standard that we should be shooting for, even with digital commercials. And just imagine this is with an iPhone 5. So think about how far phones have come even from this. It's also important to note that, you know, that the technology can change. Uh, what you have access to can change. But the the standards, the, the production qualities, the things that make images look good, the writing that is foundational to storytelling, those things always remain the same. So it doesn't always take costly toys in order to produce great content. Now, your textbook refers to the Nokia N95 commercials, and I found them here since uh, it goes over these in, in detail some. I wanted you to see them. I honestly had never seen these commercials, and I think that they're a pretty good representation of what early uh, digital content looked like and the type of quality and uniqueness that you want to shoot for. Some people accuse us of being button counters or thread counters, and yes, in fact, we are. The fact is that accuracy is extremely important to us. Without accuracy, we're not soldiers in period clothing. We become hobbyists in a costume. Fire! Um, this hat is what is known as a cock hat, uh, or as we call them today, a bicorn. It's similar to the famous chapeau bra, which was similar to this, but folded flat and went under your arm. And really what it is is a stylized version of the old-fashioned tricorn hat, what we call a tricorn hat, what they then called a bicorn hat from the Revolution. And if you turn it sideways on my head, it becomes a Napoleon hat. Uh, well, I could go on and on, but the fact is that uh, we do allow one actual modern technology. It's the Nokia, or rather, as it is correctly pronounced, uh, Nokia N95. Uh, this is, has a uh, GPS satellite positioning system, and we're using it here to input the actual period coordinates from War of 1812 maps, and we are going to retrace the footsteps of our unit as it fought through the battle of Fort Abel. Up. To the right about face! What kind of people do reenactments? All kinds of people. The historians, uh, scholars, hobbyists, husbands, wives, children, anyone who has an interest in recreating the past safely anyone who has an interest in understanding the history of this nation. Remember, U.S. spells us. March! So March. As, as an early example Step. of digital commercials, Step. these Nokia Step. ones really Step. Provide a good narrative. They have an in depth but somewhat funny look into the technology that's being used. And in addition, it, uh, it kind of, uh, what am I trying to say? Juxtaposes the old tradition of uh, war reenactments with new technology. And so, again, you have those basic persuasive elements that we've talked about throughout the Hilliard chapter, um, but it just utilizes new things to be able to tell the story in a longer format, um, but also in a visually interesting way. Now, I think it would um, be lax of me in teaching you internet considerations for commercials, not to point out that we as media consumers need to have digital literacy when it comes to commercials online. As we are looking for products to buy, information to gain, and just sources of, of news all around, we have to be particularly cautious online because it's so easy to manipulate others. Um, we have things like deep fake where someone using pretty much an app, I mean, I can do deep fakes um, and I'm not any kind of special technical person. Um, but I have the ability to create deep fakes that I use for my research where I replace 
someone's face or even just their mouth and make them say something that they didn't actually say. Those are the types of things that we can do. And yet, uh, if we're not aware of those happening, if we're not checking our sources, if we're not really thinking about where this content and information is coming from, we can get ourselves into a lot of trouble as media consumers. It's why it's so important to think about uh, what you're clicking on prior to actually clicking on it. Uh, here's an example that's not even using great technology. This is something you guys could easily do after taking one of our broadcasting classes. It's just slowing down a video, but it completely manipulates the situation where it makes House Speaker Nancy Pelosi seem like she was drunk during an appearance, and this was widely shared on the internet. Pelosi has a lot on her plate leading the House of Representatives, quelling factions in her own party, going head-to-head -head with President Trump. She's a favorite target of Republicans, and also the alt-right. Recent videos circulating online have been manipulated to make the Congresswoman's words sound sluggish and slurred. This video posted by the Politics Watchdog Facebook page has more than 28,000 shares and 1.2 million views. It shows Pelosi speaking at the Center for American Progress Ideas Conference on May 22nd. But when compared to the Washington Post's verified feed of the same event, it is clear the Facebook video is playing at 75% of the original speed. We want to give this president the opportunity to do something historic for our country. We want to give this president the opportunity to do something historic for our country. So it's important that we as media consumers remain aware of what we are looking at online, fact checking, making sure everything seems right. If, if something in your gut doesn't feel right, like why is this video so grainy of the house speaker, you know, uh, check it out and, and make sure that it's accurate. But this brings house up speaker. an important point for us as media producers, because this technology exists. Like I said, I could create a deep fake right now using any of your faces and make you say something that you didn't actually say. Um, and so it's important for us as media producers to create commercials and advertisements, especially on the web that utilize ethical responsibility. Um, and that doesn't only go for the type of technology that we're using, but also in the way that we represent others. This is especially true online where you know, our commercials reach a much larger, larger audience, including places worldwide, and can have a, a large effect on the different types of people that we communicate to. This ad from Pop Chips uh, used Ashton Kutcher doing a dating video to try to create a viral, funny commercial. Uh, you'll notice that Pop Chips actually rarely appears in the commercial and, and it doesn't seem like an actual commercial either, which is concerning to a degree because people don't know where the content is coming from. Looking for romance? It's here with Worldwide Lovers. Come meet our bachelors. I'm Raj. I'm a Bollywood producer. I'm looking for the most delicious thing on the planet. I'm Nigel. I'm and think about how ethical it would be for a white man to put on brown face and talk like an Indian man for a laugh. Go away, James. So, who am I? I am Dara. My name is Swordfish. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for something hot and spicy. Like Kardashian hot. I would give that dog a bone. Yeah, how would I describe me? I'm an extraordinary lover. <laughs> I can also, without even looking, tell you whether you have an innie or an outie belly button. So my whole life is detail. Higher, lower, details good. Yes, I was in a milking contest. I love poetry. And I won it. Huh? Mm. I'm sorry I was holding my breath to look skinnier. I want to ravage you. I like snooky. I like them thin. Monkeys plus robots. But, you know, for round where it counts. This is poo poo. This is a magical feather. It was given to me by a shaman. Would you like it, Jeep? Poo-poo, it's okay. They are kosher. She only eats kosher. Yes. So would you know this is a Pop Chips commercial just based on those clips? Your waiting room's like a freak show. Are we all in the same category? Life is short. Strike a match at worldwidelovers.com.
So looking for that ad has has a few concerning points, primarily that it's trying to appear as native advertising for pop chips, uh, and they're not very clear that this is actually a commercial. And the other part, of course, is the improper representation of a people group, which more than ever, we need to be aware of as media writers and, and take a greater responsibility in accurately portraying people through commercials. Now, another important thing to think about is sending people to the right place. This is not only ethical, but it's good business. And what you're doing through interactive ads is using the link that is attached to the online advertisement to send them to a website to do the next action, right? To move them down the conversion funnel model, which we've talked about before, where, you know, if they just see the ad, you're at least building awareness. If they start to uh, read or click in to learn more, that's more consideration. And so you're trying to get them all the way down to the purchase. And one of the key aspects of that, especially for online advertisement, online advertising is using the proper link to a site. So the site you're linking to must also be attractive and engaging. So you want to work uh, as an advertising or marketing or PR department with the website designers to make that a better user experience. In addition, when you are sending people to the wrong place, it's going to hurt your search engine optimization and uh, your user experience overall will decline. So make sure as you're writing online ads to provide a very straightforward call to action. If you are telling people learn more about this product and it just sends you to the location to buy it, that's not learning more. Create a web page that is a stepping stone where they can learn more about the product, what's in it, you know, uh, how much it costs, things like that, and then have them buy it from that website. So make it very straightforward what you are wanting the audience to interact with. Now, here's an excellent example of uh, interactivity, creativity of advertising, and making sure you're sending people to the right place. One of the things that is required to be a good creative in the agency world that has not changed is a dedication to craft. Home Depot is all about the doing. In Pinterest, you see a lot of beautiful afters and sometimes the befores. There was a gap in the space of how to get from A to B. How do we create something that gives them confidence and makes them think that Home Depot is the partner for that? they were looking for these inspirational rooms, it became the perfect platform to put this confidence building message in there. So we got to a place of built-in pens. We tell the transformation story of four different rooms in the home. All of the room transformation stories that we were telling happen inside the spaces of an actual pen unit. Aside from just our four hero transformation stories and videos, there's a full ecosystem of content that surrounded it. In total, I think it was over 60 unique pins where they could browse shoppable content, how-to instruction content. Someone who is on the platform, who's on Pinterest, to collect and dream and plan, it's about taking them further down that spectrum. The rooms that they were inspired by, they could achieve themselves. We were the first to create a shoppable 360-degree experience allowing them to step inside the room that they saw built. We saw fantastic engagement, 36 million video views, over 350,000 clicks to site. The campaign was one of the most successful social endeavors that they've had to date. We just did something cool. What's the next thing that we're gonna do? So I love this video because it shows us the process that the agency used to create the campaign. And what they did was they saw this gap on Pinterest from the before and after picture. Well, what, what's the in-between? It's what the Home Depot does, right? And so they wanted to create confidence boosters that if you're on Pinterest and trying to do a transformation, the Home Depot can help you do that. And they did that by creating this you know, built-in pins idea. So when you click on a built-in pin from Home Depot, it takes you into an AR experience where you can actually like move move inside the room through your phone. Um, and then 
you know, let's say you see a really cool cabinet that you want, then you can click on the orange dot and it's going to take you to that cabinet. And so you are creating this advertisement for your products by showing people how to properly use them. And so that's utilizing technology, writing, and creativity in such an important way. We also talked about how important participation is. Here is another ad campaign that utilizes new technology in order to really focus on participation in an entire digital campaign. To get more people to try Coke Zero, we created an entire campaign that they could literally drink. First, we built a billboard that served real Coke Zero to thousands of fans. Then, we poured Coke Zero to people all over the country. Your TV is about to pour you a Coke Zero. This is a drinkable commercial. We partnered with Shazam and created a new way of using their technology. Shazam now to drink it. By Shazamming the spot, the Coke Zero from the screen was poured right into people's phones, whether they were at home, at a concert, or among 80,000 people at the NCAA final game. Every interaction ended with a free Coke Zero that could be redeemed at major retail stores across the U.S. Even when there was no screen, we poured Coke Zero using just sound. from ads that became cups, to flyers that became straws, to tweets that poured Coke Zeros into 140 characters, to drinkable posters that use Shazam to turn people's phones into digital straws. Every single ad put a Coke Zero in people's hands. So next time you're thirsty, drink an ad. So the Coke Zero ad really, you know, utilized an entire campaign around the idea of digital content to produce an interactive experience for the consumer. And it's really important to be thinking about how your campaign can work together. It's great to have an online ad that works, but if it doesn't work with your television commercial, it's not as effective. Think about all the ways that Coke utilized creativity around this digital idea to then get uh, print ads that were used into straws, billboards, tweets. And, and when you have an experience like this that your consumer can connect to and participate in, it really makes them want to share the content and be a part of the campaign. So, you know, tweeting out gulp, 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 you get a free Coca-Cola. Who's not going to do that, right? And so it really creates this viral experience that people are going to want to share. So as young consumers who are connected to what's trendy, what's happening now, that is so important for PR professionals, marketing professionals, advertisers to really tap into. And you can be a wonderful creative resource for your employer to draw on because you are continually staying on top of trends and new technologies. So I hope that um, those ads kind of help you think about ways that you can utilize the internet and digital content responsibly. I also want you to watch a very short uh, graphic video. Uh, there's no words. It's just, uh, you know, words on, on the screen. Um, uh, called social nomics. They put out these videos every single year that talk about the influence of social media on communication and on our lives. And so I think this is a great primer for next week's lesson, which will be writing for social media. And then finally, uh, I want you to write your 11th critique on social media ads. Hope you guys have a great week.